basically teaching of the Holocaust came into effect uh, after the Stockholm Declaration, um, which was an outcome of an international gathering of 46 member states, including Britain, in January 2000, and was organized by the International Holocaust Remembrance Alliance in response to the Holocaust. Its declaration statement pledges to combat further genocides, ethnic cleansing, racism, anti-Semitism, and xenophobia, and resist Holocaust denial. To this course, uh, education and remembrance and research play a key role in the past violence while promoting the knowledge and skills, values, and violence of hate crimes. One of the critical features of effective teaching is that it elicits uh, from students their pre-existing understanding of the subject matter. So a lot of people, including myself, when I, when I, when I went onto the course, I had my own preconceived ideas and preconceptions and um, misunderstandings of the topic area, misconceptions. I had all those things about the Holocaust. The act of instruction, basically, in class can be viewed as helping the students to unravel um, individual strands of belief, you know, the different beliefs that they already hold, uh, values, for example, uh, label them and then weave them into a fabric of more complete understanding, rather than denying the relevancy of a belief. Uh, we cannot deny what they already believe. Uh, we cannot change what people already believe about whether it's race or about the Holocaust. We cannot change that. But what we can do is with the knowledge that is provided, the new knowledge that they receive, they can begin to reconstruct and, 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 and begin to you know, assimilate what they already have, the knowledge that they have. So teachers might do better by helping students dif differentiate their present ideas from and integrate them into a conceptual belief or processes of learning that can eventually lead to the development of expertise or understanding.